Professor Young from University of Melbourne, Australia, and the title of her talk is Homology Theories and Quantum Group. Uh, Professor Young, you may continue. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction. So first of all, I would like to thank the organizers for inviting me. Unfortunately, I couldn't be there in person, so I will uh, deliver my talk online. Okay. So uh, this is the title of my talk. Okay. Great. So uh, I'm a representation theorist, and I usually start my talk with a finite dimensional semi-simple algebra. So the first part will be uh, some background, uh, which presumably everybody knows already. Okay, I'm just gonna set up the notation. So um, yeah, so denote by G, finite dimensional semi-simple algebra over the complex numbers. And this one is known. Uh, the classification is given by the uh, thinking diagram, type A to type G. Right, and here's a picture of the thinking diagram. For example, in particular for type A, we get a SLM plus one with rank N. This consists of matrices with trace zero. And uh, so the fundamental questions in rep theory is, um, suppose I have a finite dimensional Lie algebra or it might be its cousins, for example, quantum groups. And uh, we want to classify the representations of G, where representations, remember, recall, V is a representation of G, means, uh, so first of all, this is a finite dimensional vector space. And uh, together with a G action, so you want a, a map from G to endomorphism V, which preserves the Lie bracket. So it's a Lie algebra homomorphism. And uh, so suppose we have a representation of G, so I denoted by V. And the second main question is, uh, what do we know about this representation? Or uh, what's the character formula for its representation? And uh, just a, a quick recall, so the character of a representation, so that's sum up over all weights. So X is my weight lattice and uh, dimension of V mu, dimension of each weight space and E to the mu. So this will be a element in the X, okay? And in particular, so if I take all those E to the mu to be one, so the character uh, encodes the dimension of V. So this encode. dimension of V, okay, very good. And uh, so the basic theorems in this area, um, the category, if I look at the category of finite dimensional representation of G over the complex number, so the category is semi-simple, which means um, for each finite dimensional representation, so we can decompose this guy as direct sum of simple representations or irreducible representations. So those irreducible ones uh, means it has no proper sub-representation. And uh, so the good thing semi-simple uh, is you always has a direct sum. And how many uh, irreducible representation of G it has? And the part two of the theorem says this uh, is classified by the dominant integral weights. So for example, for SL3, it has the following picture. So this is my weight lattice Z2. And inside here, so the dominant integral weights consists of the integral points and this dominant chamber. Okay. And later on, for each dominant integral weights, I will uh, denote the irreducible by L lambda. All right, and this is also uh, an important formula. Um, so the character of this irreducible is given by the wild character formula. So it has the following expression. 
And in particular, if you want to compute the dimension, so in particular, the dimension of the irreducible L lambda is given by, uh, there's also a formula, product of all positive roots. We do the pairing of lambda plus rho, which uh, with each positive roots, then divided by this one. Okay. Right, so let me uh, give you a very simple example for SO2. So G equal to SO2. So I think this everybody knows, two by two matrices with entries in C such that the trace equal to zero. And uh, so the standard basis, so E will be the, uh, uh, this one and H is a diagonal and F is a lower triangular one, okay? And uh, um, so, uh, so for SO2, all the finite dimensional irreducible representation look like the following. So I take V to be the uh, standard representation of uh, SO2. And uh, uh, right, so all the finite dimensional will be same. Uh, so let me pick the highest integral weight to be lambda, so lambda lies in N. So it will be sim of lambda of this V. So in other words, if you draw a picture, so I have all the bases, those dots. And the action of E is uh, raising operators. And the action of F will be, oh yeah. those lowering operators. And each of the dot will be the eigenbasis for my H. Okay, so in, in particular dimension of this irreducible representation is lambda plus one. Okay, so that's the situation for uh, the SO2. Is my time fixed? All right. All right. Uh, so now let's look at uh, uh, a quantum group at the roots of unity. So my notation is uh, U epsilon G, where uh, epsilon is a complex number, and I want it to be piece roots of unity. So for example, uh, if I take G to be SO2, and uh, how do you define the quantum group at roots of unity? So this is the Euro quantum group with generator and relations and uh, I pick an integral form. Okay, the zoom still works, good. So I pick an integral form, which means this algebra over the integral ring and uh, it will be a sub algebra for this UQSO2 generated by the divided powers. And then after that, I specialize Q to be the roots of unity. So that's a quantum group at the roots of unity. And uh, so just to just for comparison, the representation of quantum group of unity, this is interesting. Just to give you a simple example, let's say P equal to three and G. Can you still hear me? I can, we can hear you. Oh, great, okay. Right, so uh, for P equal to three, for G equal to SO2, so let me take the highest weight to be seven. And I consider this a standard representation. So this is modeled on the, uh, so this analog of seam seven of V in the SL2 case. In the SL2, so this one is irreducible. So now I have this representation and I, I can write down what the generator E and F acts on the uh, standard basis. And again, so it's a eigenvector for the K and uh, F will increase in the, decrease the weight and E will increase the weight. And uh, so now I have the divided powers. So the piece divided power will um, decrease the weight by P and I have an increasing operator will increase the weight by P as well. So I can write down this representation. So let me draw the picture. 
Okay, so for lambda equal to seven, and the label I'm using is, so I have x negative seven, x negative five, x negative three, x negative one, x one, x three, and x five, x seven. So that's all my um, vector, weight vectors. And uh, right, so if I write down the action, so this is uh, F, F. Okay, so now the thing is, if I look at this vector, X3, this X3, and F will kill the X3. So the reason is, if I look at my formula, uh, F of X3, I have a coefficient, and this coefficient here will be um, three epsilon. So this number is quantum integer. It means one plus epsilon plus epsilon squared. And because epsilon is the third root of unity, so this equal to zero. So F will kill this X3. And then we can keep going to, um, so I have F, I have F. And similarly, F will kill this X negative three. And I have F. And similarly, we can do E, so that's E, this is E, and E will kill this X negative three, and I have E, and I have E, and E will kill this X three as well, and I have the operator E. And you can draw the um, F three like this, and so on. And you can draw the E three, like jump the, uh, right, so uh, right, so the uh, so the weight will be three for e three. Okay, so for this picture, um, so the so now the thing is, if I look at uh, uh, this guy, this sub vector space x negative three and uh, x three uh, span of these two vectors, so this will be a proper sub module of so proper u epsilon g sub module of this standard module. In other words, this thing um, is no longer irreducible. So it was irreducible for um, the enveloping algebra of SO2, but if I consider the quantum group as root of unity, so this is no longer irreducible. Okay, and uh, so it's a sub module because there's no arrow going out from this two to other module. Okay, so now you see the difference. So I can define the quotient L epsilon lambda. So that will be the standard guy quotient by this, um, this smaller one, x3, x negative three. So this, uh, it turns out this is a irreducible module in this case. So that's a reducible module of the u epsilon g. Okay, right, so I hope I uh, make this point clear. So, uh, so now the theorem for quantum group as roots of unity, so the, uh, that's Lustig's conjecture around uh, the 80s, and now it's a theorem. So suppose lambda is a dominant integral weight, and uh, the first part is still the same as before, each, uh, so simple means irreducible. So each irreducible finite dimensional representation over the quantum group, it's still parameterized by a dominant integral weight. So just for simplicity, I'll denote this by L epsilon lambda. And uh, now the dimension will be different. As in this example, the dimension for uh, so the dimension, uh, the wild character formula will tell you the dimension is eight, but if you compute uh, the quantum group at the root of unity, so the dimension is uh, eight minus two, so that's a six, all right? And there's a formula. So the formula is uh, you use the wild character formula and uh, um, so uh, sum over all other roots. So there's a coefficients and coefficients would involve the affine wild group and the affine Kashtan-Lustig polynomial. 
So this is the affine cash down lowstick polynomial. Okay, right, so that's the background I wanted to explain. And now, uh, so for me, the general theme of my research, I wanted to use the homotopy theory to study representation theory of the Lie algebra and its cousins. And you can think of, um, so this Lie algebra G SO2 has to do with the cohomology and this quantum group has roots of unity. So this has to do with the case area. And uh, so what I mean, uh, so what do I mean by homotopy theory? So in particular, I wanna um, emphasize this oriented cohomology theory A. So this you can consider is a functor from the category of algebraic varieties to the category of graded rings. And uh, for smooth maps, it allow you to take a pullback. And for proper maps, um, you can take push forward and for some line bundles. So the orientation means the first chain class of the line bundle is well defined. All right. So standard example, maybe let me show this room. So standard example, um, the singular cohomology means I have the uh, Chain complex and taking cohomology. So that's an example. And K theory, the uh, elliptic cohomology, and even the cobordism. And this cobordism is special because it's a universal oriented cohomology theory. All right. Um, yeah, so it has this nice picture. Um, if I apply the cobordism to some algebraic varieties, the element looks like uh, all other varieties over X and quotient by the cobordant relation means um, M and N are cobordant if there's a one dimensional higher variety uh, mapped to uh, X cross the interval whose boundary are given by M and N. <laughs> Right, so the oriented cohomology theory has to do with uh, formal group laws. So let me explain. So formal group law by definition, it's an element in, uh, so that's some base ring. So where R is a commutative ring. With uh, U and V, those are formal variables subject to certain axioms. Um, so the commutativity means if I do FUV, it's the same as FVU. And I got identity means I have FU of zero. So it's the same as U. And this is uh, associativity means I do U plus V under this F, then plus W, it's the same as U plus, I do V plus W first, okay. So, uh, so there's an old theorem by Quelan. It says uh, um, formal group law and oriented cohomology theory they are correspond to each other. Uh, so the relation is given as follows. Suppose I have an X with arbitrary two line bundles and uh, I do the tensor product that's another line bundle and I compute the first chain class of the tensor product and uh, you expand it in terms of um, each individual C1s, you will see this formal group law. So this is C1 here, depend on your uh, which uh, oriented cohomology theory you are working on. Okay, so this give you um, a correspondence. So for example, um, if I take, uh, a to be the singular cohomology, the formal group law has to do, uh, is just the additive ones. So this come from uh, the additive formal group law. If I take A to be the case area, the formal group law is a multiplicative one. So this comes from the multiplication in C star. And uh, 
Uh, so for elliptical homology, the formal group law comes from the elliptic curve. All right, so, uh, so I think I explained this one-to-one -one correspondence between oriented cohomology theory and the uh, uh, formal group laws where cohomology K theory elliptic. So you will see additive, multiplicative and uh, elliptic curve. Okay, so now, um, right. So one of my research is trying to attach this uh, oriented cohomology theory to the category of affine quantum groups. So when I say affine quantum groups, so you can think it's quantizing maps from this uh, formal group or algebraic group to a uh, finite dimensional Lie algebra. So the standard example for the additive case, um, so there's a quantum group called the Yanging, which if I take h bar to be zero, you, uh, you get back the maps from C to G, and which is the current algebra. So the enveloping algebra of G tends as a one variable um, polynomial ring. And uh, if I take the group law to be C star, we get the uh, quantum loop algebra, which if I take Q to be one, so it deforms maps from C star to the Lie algebra. So which is G tends as a Laurent polynomial ring. And uh, so for the elliptic curve, this quantum group has to do with the elliptic quantum group, which more or less uh, you can think this quantize maps from an elliptic curve to G, but uh, what kind of maps need to be uh, uh, speci uh, specified, and uh, you can think this thing is uh, Lie algebra tensor the functions on the elliptic curve. Okay, and another way to um, to say what those three quantum groups are is uh, they actually give rise to the rational trigonometric or elliptic solution of this quantum Young box equation. Okay, so that's the standard picture. Okay, um, so one of the goals in my research is um, I wanted to define those quantum groups geometrically, means without using uh, generator relations. And also I wanted to study the quantum groups uh, corresponding to formal groups other than those three cases. Um, right, so by doing that, uh, hopefully we can use the ideas and the machinery from homotopy theory to study uh, rep theory. Okay, so now let me uh, move on to tell you the construction. So construction, um, so the input are two things. One is a uh, oriented cohomology theory A star, and the other is this finite dimensional Lie algebra. So I'm gonna uh, encode this D algebra into a quiver. So you can think the Q is just the thinking quiver for G. So for example, that's an example of a quiver. So it's a directed diagram with vertices and arrows. And the algebra relevant uh, here is uh, uh, the so-called preprojective algebra means, uh, so I have the quiver, I can consider the um, loop algebra, so the path algebra of the double the quiver means for each arrow and adding the double, right? So x1, so I have a reversed arrow x1 star and x2, I have a reversed arrow x2 star and also reversed arrow of x3 star. And uh, so the pre-projective algebra will be a quotient for this uh, path algebra of the double the quiver. For example, if the quiver is a Jordan quiver, and uh, if I look at the representation of the pre-projective algebra, so this consists of a pair of um, n by n matrices, x, x star. So, so this pair tells you the uh, representation of the doubled quiver, and the relation is a commutation relation. So I want those two commutes. Okay. All right. And uh, 
Right, so, uh, so the input is A and Q. So A is a core multi series and Q uh, tells you which Lie algebra to use. And uh, so I denote this thing by uh, PAQ. So that's a cohomological Hall algebra, meaning as a graded vector space, I take this, this representation of pre-projective algebra. So that's a affine. So, so this guy is a affine variety and quotient by this uh, uh, GLV. This is a general linear group. So it's a affine variety. It's a stack affine variety quotient by a group action quotient by G. Right, right. So, uh, so there's a whole multiplication defined on this big graded vector space. It's called the cohomological Hall algebra or coha. And uh, so, so the coha. So the idea goes back to uh, Ringo Dreamfield in the '90s, where they talk about uh, the Hall algebra, and they have the relation of Hall algebra with the Euro quantum groups. And also in the uh, affine version, the cohomological version that has to do with uh, so conservator Soberman introduced the coha when they studied the uh, Donaldson Thomas invariance for Calabial threefold, and also some other version uh, due to Schiffman and Vassarov. Okay, so, uh, so the main theorem is um, so on this coha. There's a product, there's a co-product. So we can make this to be a, a bi-algebra. So that's an old theorem of me and Gufang in the 16. Um, and uh, so you have this bi-algebra and uh, you can form the Dreamfield double. So that I denoted by uh, U H bar of AQ. So this thing is a quantum group uh, associated to this oriented cohomology theory A and the quiver Q. And this is a main um, object, main construction. And this double, so, so whatever this quantum group is, so, so this thing will automatically acting on the corresponding A homology of the so-called Nakajima quiver variety. And uh, so this quiver variety can be, uh, is defined using the frame the quiver and double frame the quiver. So if you are familiar with this language, so you can think that uh, this algebra is the non-framing version. So you erase those uh, framings. Okay. And in the uh, special example, for example, A is a cohomology and Q is a thinking quiver of your Lie algebra. And uh, this algebra is really the yanking of G. Okay, so the last three minutes. Um, so let me quickly give you the application. So why this um, is interesting. So for example, I can take the um, oriented cohomology theory to be the equivalent elliptic cohomology. So there's a refined version of uh, the elliptic cohomology due to many people. And uh, so if I plug in the equivalent elliptic cohomology, so we can uh, produce a shifified elliptic quantum groups. Okay. And we use those shifified version, uh, we discover the relation with the uh, global affan grassmann uh, over the Kilbert skin points on elliptic curve. And uh, so there are other um, mm, oriented cohomology theory to use. For example, the so-called Morava E series. So those are the large family of cohomology series. For example, this thing is parameterized by uh, each prime number means your uh, series is p-localized. Uh, that's the uh, prime number p. And also by integer n. So this n has to do with the height of your formal group. And so this, in particular case, if your height is zero, you have the cohomology. If your height is one, so you have the k area, localize the k area. If your height is two, so you have localized the elliptic and height is three and more, so you get more and more uh, cohomology series. And for those ones, so you also got new and interesting quantum groups. Okay, yeah, great. So, uh, so that's my talk, thanks a lot. Thank you for your attention. I will stop it here. Uh, thank you for the talk. Uh,
had a question whether um, Lee algebras over other fields, such as the periodic fields, were studied from this viewpoint, and what are the results known? Thank you. Right. So uh, that's a very good question, and uh, uh, so uh, right. So there are two stories. Like, uh, uh, for example, at the beginning, I'm, every time I mention the algebra has to over a complex number, so the reason is. If you do the Lie algebra over uh, FP bar with characteristic P, then this theorem is not true. Actually, there are interesting results even for that. So, so this one at the beginning, so it's important I'm taking um, the, uh, the representation, the Lie algebra over the complex number. If it's over FP bar, then the wild character formula is wrong. And uh, there are some interesting conjectural formula and people still studying it. And uh, for other fields, um, uh, I can say for other fields uh, uh, about this oriented cohomology stuff, uh, I, I do not know. <laughs> yeah, I cannot say too much. Um, I usually just work over the complex number uh, to deal with those oriented cohomology series. Any other questions? Yeah, hello. Uh, so actually, you are looking at finite dimensional representations, but uh, are there any such statements for infinite dimensional representations and associated uh, quantum action? Right. So, um, so I lied a little bit somewhere here. So when I say so, it's important for uh, us usually uh, when the weight. So I have a weight decomposition when the weight space is finite dimensional. And actually, uh, let's see. So for some parts, for example, uh, this one. So in this result, if I look at the A star of the Nakajima quiver variety, normally this will be infinite dimensional. But the weight space are finite dimensionals. Okay. But so if you think it's the highest uh, weight module. Is there some category of infinite dimensional representations and you know what is the structure of those uh, spaces? Uh, sorry, can you repeat your question? Because I think the first statement on your first slide. Oh, the first slide. Um, oh, the beginning, the same at the beginning. Oh, about infinite dimensional. Um, so the infinite dimensional then uh, it's not a uh, integral weights for some of, for example, for SO2, if you look at weights like a half or something, you, you may get uh, infinite dimensional ones. Yes. Mm. Yeah, there are Verma, Verma modules for the algebra, for example, those are infinite dimensionals. Okay. Can you also do instead of uh, finite dimensional Lie algebra? Can you also do for infinite dimensional Lie algebras? So um, yes. So uh, when I say affine Lie algebra, so the size is already infinite. Yeah. So uh, maybe let me write it here. Right. So. Uh, Yeah, depend on what you do. And uh, for example, uh, when I write G, so uh, I usually mean uh, finite dimensional. And uh, right, so for those affine version and uh, uh, all those quantum group, I, I guess basically has a size. So, so this is more or less G tensor U plus minus with central extension. So this is infinite dimensional. And uh, somehow for, from the Koha point of view, I automatically get those loops. So I automatically get the affine quantum groups. So, so Koha normally give you maps from some G to G. So that's just the size wise. And uh, for example, the additive thing. So you get uh, this guy, you quantize this guy. So that's already an infinite dimensional. And geometrically, so those loops has to do with uh, C1 of line bundles. So it's already there. Thank you very much. 
Uh, thank any, you. Thank you for the questions. Any other questions? If not, let's thank the speaker again. Thank you, Professor Young. Thank you.